So this is Dolly Saad's FX. It's the FX section from a generative patch I did recently called Dolly Saad's. And I've sort of adapted it to be a standalone and, and more manipulatable uh, sort of effects thing. It's a, what it is is a three loopers that have a feedback uh, matrix, uh, matrix mixer feedback situation. So you can feed different loops into one another and create sort of evolving loop landscapes. Um, and the way that it works is, uh, you may notice this little light here flashing. Um, what happens is that, that this is indicating when a threshold has been crossed. You can set the threshold here. There's a sensitivity control. And basically the idea is that um, the, the looping is recorded by uh, <coughs> um, LFOs that are fed into a sample and hold. And then when the threshold is crossed, that sample and hold is triggered. So if the LFO is high, uh, we see these LFOs uh, occasionally pop up here. They're set pretty slow right now, um, but here we see some high signals. And if the LFO is high when a threshold is crossed, then it'll start recording. And it'll um, stop recording the next time the LFO is low and the threshold is crossed again. So there's a twofold effect there. One is that it while it uses sort of LFOs to create a bit of orderliness, it's still also um, based on your playing, uh, based on what you feed into it. Uh, and so you get this sort of mixture of regular and irregular from it um, because it's not determined entirely by the LFOs and it's not determined entirely by your your playing what you play into it. It's sort of a combination of the two. Uh, and we can control the speed of the LFO for each one of these loopers. There's something called a refresh rate. Um, and, and I called it that because it's the rate at which the loop buffer can be refreshed, you know. So uh, the faster that is, the faster the LFO goes and the, the quicker the uh, opportunities for refreshing occur. And as you push it higher, you get more sort of glitchy results. Um, I'll just... not really how I use it, but I wanted to put that in there as sort of an option. Um, you know, I tend to keep the refresh rate pretty low. sort of a mixture of the two, glitchy stuff and some uh, longer recordings. It's, uh, anyhow, uh, <laughs> moving on, there's this thing called the play ratio, and that really just sets the duty cycle of the LFO. Um, so, you know, if you are wanted to, to record or have longer windows for recording and and less time for potential playback, uh, you can adjust that ratio. So I keep the play ratios myself pretty high, but you can sort of use them to manipulate also sort of the density of the loopers. So if you, you know, think it's all a bit too much, you can have them record more than they play back. 
um, and you know get different results that way. Uh, each of the loopers has an option for pitch and whether they play back in reverse or in the forward direction. And then this is the feedback mixer. So you can feed this looper one to two or three, feed one, feed the second looper to one or three, and feed this last looper to one or two. And, and that just sets the levels that those um, loopers are fed into one another. Uh, the other thing that's going on under the hood is that those feedback paths are modulated by slow moving and randomized sine waves. And the reason for that is twofold. One is that it adds more variety to the sound. You get sort of swells and dips and, and it makes the signal much more complex over time. Um, but the other aspect is that it controls, you know, we're creating a feedback loop and we don't want runaway gain. So this makes sure that over time, the feedback is not too great. Um, there may be moments where, you know, a, a looper will sound louder than uh, it, it may be expected when it's recording both the input and everything coming out of the other two loopers. Um, but over time, it shouldn't get into runaway gain territory. It should even out over time. Uh, and as you may have figured out, we have... little buttons here that we can use to control the uh, looper, whether it's on or off. Uh, the middle and right stomp switch control the first two loopers. This one doesn't have a stomp switch because I ran out of stomp switches because the left stomp switch is used in this manner uh, to hold the loops. So if I none of the loopers are turning red as I cross the threshold um, and then we can Still a lot of weirdness going on in there. From when I push the refresh window up a lot, I feel bad it makes demonstrating this a little bit harder because you just sort of doesn't capture the sound of what this patch can do. Um, there's an overall wet level for controlling, you know, the overall level of the loopers, but there's also levels for each of the individual loopers. Um, you know, particularly if we've got something pitched up, you know, we might want to keep that a little bit quieter. Because those sounds can uh, become quite, you know, consuming. Um, and then we've got a dry level. And along here we've got... Uh, I already showed that, that's the hold buffer, but we have high pass and low pass filters and controls for the reverb. Um, so you can use these to shape. The output. that
dry level control. Uh, and then there's a secondary page of controls that just deal with some sort of additional features. So the most important one is probably this button, which turns it into automatic recording mode. And in this mode, um, we'll see a couple of changes are, if we're, we have it in that mode, our threshold crossing uh, pixel or UI button turns magenta or pink, and so does our hold button, um, just to indicate on the front panel which mode you're in. But in this mode, it ignores the threshold. I just use the threshold crossing light to give some sort of visual indication on the first page what was happening. Um, and instead, these LFOs and their duty cycles automatically control the recording. So it's a, you know, if you don't want to worry about all this, you know, threshold crossing dynamic stuff, but you still want sort of that feedback mixer thing going on, um, you can get that. Now, uh, because it's not determined by dynamics, the loops have cleared because nothing was recorded into them. And, you know, with the dynamics, it gives you, it also gives you more control over how long the loops are sort of held in place. But some neat effects uh, that way you don't have to worry about your playing style and the threshold crossing and that sort of thing um, you still get some of the feedback elements And you can still hold uh, that buffer in the same way. It works a little bit differently, but the same ideas at play. Um, there's also a, a minimum record time and a maximum record time. Um, the maximum record time is like 31 and a half seconds because the loopers only record for 32 seconds. And if you record for longer than 32 seconds, they behave uh, incorrectly, let's say. And the minimum is just if you're, you know, um, using the, the sort of dynamic mode and the threshold keeps sort of bouncing across the the crossing and you get some sort of like glitchy zzz, buzzing sounds, you can increase the minimum record time. This goes up to one second because really here we're looking for just sort of like a very small amount um, to make sure that you, you sort of avoid those buzzing sounds. So if you find yourself in a position where the material you're using, you know, the dynamics of it, whatever, don't really work for the dynamic recording in the way that you'd like, but you still want to use that sort of uneven timing thing, you can use both of these sort of to control um, how the loop records. And they also affect the automatic recording mode. Um, the other two controls are stereo spread. There's a stereo spread that the, the loops are summed to mono and then they come out through a stereo spread and you can control how wide that stereo image is. Um, it, it happens before the reverb. And then there's a filter cue. Uh, if, sorry, if I have audio running out.
the filter cue can have quite a dramatic uh, effect on the sound. The other thing you might have heard is that it clicks just a little bit um, as it's adjusted because these filters on the front panel, I spent a lot of time trying to make sure the CPU would allow you to manipulate them without clicking. They're multi-filters and the multi-filters don't like being modulated. Um, but the filter Q, um, yeah, <laughs> uh, because it affects both of the filters simultaneously, it's just that little bit too much and it, the CPU clips a little bit when you uh, adjust it. But it does have a pretty big effect on the sound. So I wanted to include that as something that was sort of easily accessible. Um, and that is Dolly Sod's effects. Um, that's what it does. That's, that's the patch. Um, I think it's a really cool patch for taking sort of like simple material, a little piano, which is why I wanted to use the piano today, uh, and making it more complicated because, you know, the feedback looping causes everything to sort of um, keep sort of evolving on top of, of one another. I don't have a good way to explain it, but the, the loops have a, a very like evolutionary feel over time as little snippets sort of get recorded and repeated and repitched and, and whatnot. Um, so, you know, I liked how it turned out for the generative patch and I wanted something that I could use for other material and I thought other people might enjoy that too. So here we are. Uh, thank you. Have a good day.